Alright everyone, let's take a look at normal functions. And I realized I did a pointer video, but uh, it showed how to use a function with pointers, but not a normal function. So it, it's pretty important to know how to do a normal function, honestly. And I'm going to show you how to do one today. Um, what you can see is what I have laid out here. Uh, we have a few integers. We have integer x, which is equal to 12. z is equal to 48. And then f is not equal to anything. It's uninitialized. And I have a print statement set for it. So let's write a function. So you have to write int, because that's what we want back. I'm going to call it add, int a, and int b. And then put the brackets afterwards, just like your main function. And so one thing that's important is you know that a and b are going to be, end up being equal to x and to z. So that's pretty important that it doesn't matter what the names are. I'm going to go ahead and show you that f is going to be equal to this function, x, z. And that's going to send x and z to there. And then x and z from there are going to go to there, into the function, to a and b. So in the function from there on out, they will be known as a and b until the end of the function. When you get back to main, they'll be back to x and z. But for now, let's look at something a little bit important. It's always good to copy the very top of your function after you write it. Copy to the top above main and put a little semicolon at the end. Now this is called a prototype and you might be able to get away with not using one, but it's important that you do. And so just make sure you always do that. So now if we can go back down We'll go ahead and write a function. And so let's just do something simple. int c equals a plus b. So I'm declaring an integer called c within the function, which is perfectly fine. And I'm just returning it after I, you know, set it equal to a plus b. And now let's go ahead. I think we have everything. And it's equal to 60, which is correct. All right, so you saw what happened there. Those two got added together into C. C was returned. And they basically went up into F. But make sure you use that prototype at all times. OK, so let's try a different example. So this one is x, z. They're both equal to a as characters. Then I have a character that is uninitialized. So already I have written out the, the name of the function. I'm going to set ch equal to it. But let's go ahead and write the function. Character decider. And I'm going to do uh, char a and char b. OK. So let's do something a little different. Uh, if you don't know about if else statements, this might be a little new. But first, let's go ahead and do the prototype just like before. Very good. And let's just do a little, you know, an if statement. Let's say if they're equal to one another, if a is equal to b, then ch will be t. Else, ch will be f. And so two return statements are just fine. Just make sure in a function you have to cover all possibilities, else you'll find a crash somewhere. And I'm just going to return those back, but before I do that, ch is going to be equal to decider sending x and z. And so what you have is x is going to there, z is going to there, they go to there, and then they're there, and they're going to be tested to see if they're equal. And let's see if they are here in a moment. I'm just going to print it out afterwards and looks like it comes out true. Well, what if I were to change one to be a little bit different? Will it still work? Yes, it becomes out false. And so, you know, that's just a little summary of how functions work. Uh, they basically return one variable and the issue with that I know is that what if you want to do more things and so for that you need pointers but 
if you're working on a project or your teacher asks you to write a function, you know, these are some simple things you can do to show you know how to do it. All right, everyone, I hope this helps. I plan to keep making videos like this and uh, hope you have a good day. Snow Music Studio.